Maintenance. Something that has to be done to every vehicle regardless of year, make, or model. I'm James Lane and with my vast car collection I am constantly doing maintenance and today it is finally time to do the 90,000 mile service on this Bentley Flying Spur. But before we get to that if you love cars just as much as I do make sure you click that subscribe button so you can subscribe to my channel and follow everything that I do. Now after putting several thousand miles on this car and taking several road trips it's finally time to do a little bit of maintenance. Now this 90,000 mile service is pretty straightforward and is something I can easily do and save myself a whole lot of money. So that's what we're going to do today so let's get started so to get this thing started we're headed out to the shop and i gotta make a stop at the dealership but not the bentley dealership but the audi dealership and audi is one of the few places that you can actually get stuff for this car you can get stuff like uh your oil filters and some of your small maintenance items Well, let's see, maybe they got an R8 up in here. That's what I need right there. So here's a new oil filter straight from the Audi dealership. And as you can see, it says the Volkswagen Group. Now this is the same filter that you would get at the Bentley dealership, but not in the Bentley box and not at the Bentley price. This thing was $18. And a lot of your regular automotive parts stores, they don't even carry a filter that would fit this car. And if they do, it's usually more expensive. So you can't go wrong by just heading down to the Audi dealership and grabbing this thing. Now the service that I'm gonna to perform to this vehicle is pretty much the 90,000 mile service straight out of the Bentley manual. And it's pretty straightforward. It's mostly just a visual inspection from things such as your brakes, your tires, your wheels, your suspension, your serpentine belt, your wiper blades, your air filter, your cabin air filter, all your fluids, and the three major components being changing the oil, changing your oil filter, and doing a tire rotation. Now obviously having a lift makes this a lot easier job and since we have it here let's get started. Before I raise this thing up I'm going to do a visual inspection underneath the hood. Now I already know that I have good air filters and good cabin air filters as you see here in the hood. I've already replaced those so we need to check the power steering fluid which it might be kind of hard to see but it's right at where it needs to be and the brake fluid looks good and let's take a look over here at the coolant. Now you want to open this thing slowly especially if it's hot and let it bleed off any air. And this is kind of weird it's got a little setup down there where it's like lines inside the tank usually they're on the outside but they're actually on the inside and the level looks good the coolant itself looks good so now we can go ahead and raise this thing up and check it out underneath now one thing you definitely want to do before you jack up the car you want to put this thing in jack mode so you don't damage any of the air suspension components and to do that you're going to hold these two buttons in for about four to five seconds and then if you look over here on your dash you should see that little yellow icon pop up and that means you're in jack mode <laughs> I'm going to start right up front now that we got this thing up and look for fluid leaks. It doesn't appear that we have any. No oil, no coolant. Everything seems to be in the right shape that it needs to be. We can take a look at our serpentine belt. And it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it right here. It looks like it's in really good shape. There's no cracking. There's no kind of contaminants or anything. So that's good to go. And we'll move over here to the suspension components. You want to make sure everything's nice and tight. No issues. You want to check your CV boot, make sure it's not busted. Inner and outer, which the inner is a little hard to see right there. It looks good. Same thing over here on the passenger side. Make sure everything's tight. No issues, no loose bolts, no busted boots. Everything looks good up front. You want to inspect your exhaust system. Make sure you don't have any leaks. You can see that usually by black spots. 
and it looks pretty good i think this is a factory stainless system so i would expect it to be in this kind of shape no uh leaks on the rear end and the cv half shafts both look pretty good even though they're kind of hard to see there and you want to do a visual check make sure everything's tight you don't have any kind of, any kind of movement and we'll move over here cv half shafts look good on the inside also check to make sure everything's tight no issues and that's pretty much what it comes down to for the visual inspection underneath the car so now that we got this thing up we'll go ahead and do the oil change and change the oil filter and here's what you're going to need to do the oil change on this car now this car requires around 13 quarts of 0w40 mobile one synthetic and these bottles are not cheap these are 45 dollars a piece i was lucky and i got these at walmart for 23 dollars a piece on sale so with the filter at 18 dollars the oil change comes in right under $100, and that's a great saving seeing that this oil change at the Bentley dealership is probably in the $500 range. And to take off your oil filter housing, you're going to need a 36 millimeter socket. A lot of people don't have those, but you will need one of those. And while we have this thing on the lift, and it is part of the service, we're going to put a brand new fuel filter on. And you've seen me do that several times before, and just like the fuel filters I've done before, I'm going to dissect that thing. We're going to take a look on the inside and see if there's any kind of contaminants. Everything's ready, so let's get this oil change started. is drained and we have the new oil filter on now let's move back to the fuel filter and here is the fuel filter now it's pretty straightforward to take this thing off all you need is a flathead screwdriver to take that cover off and then use a flathead to take off the quick disconnect lines on either side of the filter <music> And here's the old fuel filter now this thing has roughly around 2500 miles on it and i'm going to take this thing apart in a minute but i'm going to continue on with the maintenance we're going to take the wheels off inspect the brakes and rotate the tires <music> Now with the wheels off we can inspect the brakes now the rotors look pretty good and might be a check down in the crack there and it looks like the pads are pretty good on this side same thing here rotor is nice and smooth inside and out and it looks like our pads are also good here and back here on the rear the rotors look really good and the pads seem to be in pretty good shape also if you can see that and on the passenger rear our rotors look good the pads look good also so everything seems to look pretty good underneath the car and with the brakes so now we just need to rotate the tires and put the wheels back on now to do this rotation what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our front wheels and I'm going to move those straight back and I'm going to take the rear wheels now I'm going to take the left rear move it to the right front and the right rear and move it to the left front.
old school, I like to hand torque my lug nuts, so I'm going to torque them down to 110 foot pounds. Well, this maintenance service is almost complete. We have the wheels back on, we have them torqued down to spec, and the only thing left to do is to add the 13 quarts of oil to the engine. Now, after I add this oil, I'm gonna start it up, I'm gonna check underneath, make sure we don't have no leaks, and we're gonna check back at the fuel filter, make sure we don't have any leaks back there. Once all that's done, we'll get it back down on its wheels, and we'll take a look at what's inside of our old fuel filter. She's back running. Let's check underneath and see if we have any leaks. Everything looks nice and dry. No issues. And back here at our fuel filter, no issues. So, looks like everything's pretty much good to go. Now starting this thing up without fuel pressure because we removed the fuel filter. It threw a check engine light and it's got a running gear fault. But that's no big deal. We're going to hook up our laptop anyway so we can clear the maintenance monitor. And we'll take care of this at the same time. With VCDS open, we can go ahead and reset all of our service reminders, and that'll give us a clean slate. And there you have it. Everything is reset. Now it's time to cut this old fuel filter open and take a look at what's inside. You can see it's pretty nice and clean down in there. Filter looks nice and clean. I don't really see any contaminants or anything. Definitely don't see any sugar, which I didn't expect to see any. Seems like everything looks good. Now after seeing all this maintenance, you can see these cars are really not that hard to maintain, despite the Bentley name, as long as you have some tools, some knowledge, and a little bit of patience. So I'd like to say thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed to this channel, click the subscribe button and be sure to check out my new side channel, Art of the Wheel, where I have all my car show content coming to that channel soon. Be sure to subscribe to that. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram.